Hi, I'm Mark Bunker, and with me as always, my trusty sidekick, Aaron Smith-Levin, and this is Dining with the SPs. So, where are we today? So today we are at Clear Sky Cafe, one of the most popular places in downtown Clearwater. They've got a wine bar in there. I don't think there's a humidor, but you can see their nice wine selection right there. A full bar. Have you seen the dining area in the back? It's uh, modeled after a little Italian, kind of a little um, uh, Italian piazza feel. Very popular place. Great ambiance. Yeah. Love the place. So, a couple weeks ago, I had my first get together for the city council run, talking with local citizens about what they'd like to see for the future of, the, of Clearwater, how to turn this into the new golden age of Clearwater. And uh, it was a fun affair. Aaron, of course, part of my team, he was there. And we had, uh, what, 25 to 30 people show up for it. And uh, it was a lively and fun conversation. I thought it was great. Yeah. And we're doing it again. Mm -hmm. I want to let you know that uh, on August 15th, Thursday, at 7 p.m., we'll be getting together again at 302 Cedar Street in Clearwater. So come on and, and join in. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, there is no street parking, but there's a nice uh, uh, lot right next to the house that's uh, a grassy backyard, and you can park in there. You'll probably see a boat <laughs> parked in there as well, so you know you're in the right spot. Uh, but it, it, it's going to be uh, another great evening. Now, here's the deal. Not campaigning yet. We can't campaign until September 19th when we officially file the, the papers and get everything in order. And then, then a campaign can start. So I can't ask you for your vote. But what I can do, last time I brought a lot of treats and there were cookies left over. <laughs> I can't eat cookies. They should not allow me to eat cookies. But I took the cookies home, and I ate them. <laughs> Don't let that happen again. So I can't ask you to vote for me, but I can ask and demand, eat the cookies. Nobody ate the cookies. Nobody ate the cookies. Nobody wanted the cookies. Well, there were a few cookies gone. The sun chips were very popular. Yes. With me and others. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so but should, we talk about, fun. should we talk about what came up at the meeting a bit? Yes, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> now, <clears throat> so... As you've already said in some of our previous videos, you are not a single issue candidate. Right. You're not interested in just being the anti-Scientology guy. No. And yet, Scientology is going to do everything in its power to pigeonhole you into a being a single issue sure. candidate, right? Of course. And so because of this, at the meeting, we did everything we could to get people to talk and ask questions about something other than Scientology. And the thing is, in this community, it's item number one on everyone's list. We, could, we couldn't get people to ask questions about things other than Scientology. They have such a, um, on the one hand, a vacuum of information where they have a million questions. And on, and on the other hand, they, they already have a lot of information. Right, it's kind of a two sides of that coin. They they have a lot of information, and yet they have a million more questions. Absolutely. And I thought that you did an incredible job of answering their questions on the subject. Honestly, it really, really did. Um, you said something towards the end of the meeting to, where you were summing it all up, where you were like, "I'm not fighting against the Scientologists. I'm fighting for them." Absolutely. I thought it was incredible. Um, what, what does that mean to you? What do you mean by that? Well, you know, I've had uh, uh, this whole process I've gone through. It's similar to, I think, what happens when you leave Scientology. And I was never in. But it, it, it's a gradual withdrawal where you have to kind of shake off all the things that were implanted by, by L. Ron Hubbard's uh, technology. Um, so as time goes by, you, you're able to see more clearly what had happened while you were in. And the same thing in reverse happened to me, because I, of course, when I start looking into this, the first thing you hear about is Zenu, which is so odd, because the Scientologists, by and large, haven't heard about Zenu. Right. They don't know what's coming. 
in, in that way, it's a kind of a bait and switch religion because you come in and they say, hey, we got a course to help you with your relationship, with your finance, with this, that, the other thing. So it's a bunch of self-help courses and, and auditing sessions, which are kind of like therapy sessions, um, where you're talking about your, your past problems and trying to resolve those. Um, but it, as time goes by, uh, just so when I started hearing about this stuff, I thought, Zinu, you, you believe that? You gotta be crazy. And I think a lot of people think that the, at the first time, you know, oh, you gotta be stupid or what to, to believe any of this stuff. And and as I got to meet Scientologists, former Scientologists at the beginning, and especially once I started working at the Lisa McPherson Trust with Stacy Brooks. I started to understand that no, Scientologists aren't stupid. They're they're not they're not any more evil than any of us. Uh, they're they're good, positive people who are trying to make a difference. They're they're deeply they deeply believe that they're going to save the planet. And uh, unfortunately. They put the blinders on, so they can't see the negative things that Scientology is doing to them. So most of the abuses built into Scientology, like disconnection, um, uh, the RPF, for God's sakes, and uh, freeloader debt, all of these things, target the Scientologists predominantly. Mm -hmm. So I've always felt, since, uh, since the LMT years, that I'm, I'm fighting for the Scientologists to, to reform Scientology. Mm. I'm not trying to take it away from anybody. I couldn't if I wanted to. People can believe anything that they want to believe. You want to believe that the Earth is 6,000 years old? Okay, go ahead. You can believe that. You shouldn't be teaching any scientific courses in school or, or uh, setting the agenda for public schools. But to believe it. Uh, so if you want to believe in Elon Hubbard, the tech, you can. Uh, I think it's a good idea for you to to be able to look at both sides, but I, I'm not going to I'm not going to belittle anyone for being a Scientologist or think poorly of them for being a Scientologist. One key thing that happened uh, at the LMT early on is Mike Rinder, at that point, was in charge of OSA, the mm -hmm. people who were trying to attack us and destroy Bob Benton's life. And I saw the global assault they had on Bob. So I had this feeling that, boy, you've got to be evil to do what Mike Rinder does. And Stacy said, no, he's a really nice guy. It's the mindset in Scientology where what matters most is keeping Scientology working. And you, f you put everything in front of that. And it's not, <laughs> it's not that Mike Rinder is bad, it's that Mike Rinder has been led to believe that the things that, th that he's doing, and the Scientologists are still doing this stuff, they're on the right side because they're saving humanity. And, and that's why whenever I was out on the streets of Clearwater and I would encounter Scientologists like Mary DeMoss who would come out and say the most outrageous things to me uh, on camera, I never blamed her. Mm. She was trying to fight for what she thought was right. Right. And. I only heard L. Ron Hubbard when she would say horrible things to me, mm -hmm. or any of them. Mm -hmm. I never held any of this against any of the Scientologists. You know, the only exception, I think, was Dennis Clark, who was a bully, punched people mm -hmm. on camera, mm -hmm. uh, and was not a nice guy. Now, I'm sure there are other not nice guys in Scientology as well, as there are in, in all forms of society. But by and large, the Scientologists you see walking around the streets, good, decent people. And if we could, if we could be friends, we'd have a, a great time. Right. I'm not attacking them. In fact, 
on weekends I sometimes drive uh, for Uber. <laughs> and I have Scientologists in my car. And I'll pick them up <laughs> in front of the Scientology uh, buildings and uh, drive them where they want to go. I don't uh, harass them or give them trouble. <clears throat> Occasionally we'll, we'll chat a little bit about, you know, what they've gained from it, and I always say good for them. Um, they never notice they, your license plate. They never do, <laughs> because it, uh, my license plate says Xenu TV, <laughs> right? which I got back in 2000 when I first moved here, and I used to like parking it in, in front of OSA, uh, with the license plate right there. One of my favorite moments from that, I had to testify in uh, one of Bob Mitten's cases, mm -hmm. and they showed a picture, put into evidence a picture of my car. Oh, really? With the license plate. And they asked me if this was my vehicle. I said, well, it's kind of hard to say because the, <laughs> the license plate has been blacked out. Oh. I mean, my license plate is Xenu TV, X-E-N-U TV, just to put it into the record. Um, mm. and, and things like that. Uh, uh, um, but no, I... Uh, you know, the Scientologists are okay with me. Uh, I'm just not okay with them for now. But when Scientologists leave, as they occasionally do, they'll they'll contact me and say, you know, I saw you out there and I, I was railing against you and you were right. So thank you for doing that. Which is always nice to hear. Yeah. Because I'm not trying to hurt the Scientologists. I'm not trying to start any type of revolt against the Scientologists. I think it's just kind of important that we be, we're able to utter the word Scientology because it seems like everyone uh, on the council, everybody uh, throughout Clearwater is kind of afraid to say Scientology. Yeah. Well, we know that <clears> that's <throat> the big issue downtown. That's why we haven't been able to redevelop the downtown because Scientologists uh, are scary to some uh, common folk and they don't want to be, uh, they don't want to come down here and perhaps contribute to it. Right. But it's okay. That's why we're doing these videos. It's a nice place to be. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we can we can bring this back to life, but we have to stand up and say we're not afraid of you, which I did back in '99. So it's 20 years now that I that I've said hi, Scientology. My name is Mark Bunker, and uh, I'm not afraid of you. Right. And I've been fine. Yeah. I've, I've seen the awesome power that they have when they want to go after someone, and I'm not saying that it doesn't happen. Right. They'll come after me during this election big time. Yeah. But you know what? I'm willing to. I'm willing to respond to them. Yeah. And the, and the interesting thing is, I'm always happy to talk to a Scientologist. Uh, I'm not going to start a conversation here, of course, because there's an injunction. Right. right. But... If people want to talk to me, I'm happy to talk. I'm not a monster. I think that's one of the things that, if I may humble brag here, this is one of the things that people have said to me over the years is that you're not like a ranting lunatic uh -huh. with conspiracy theories and all of this stuff. You seem like a nice guy who's just telling the truth. And that's the way I look at it. Right. Others may disagree, but um, you can you can believe in Scientology. You can you can take Scientology courses. You can be my friend, as I feel. If Scientology reforms and stops all of these abuses, you could succeed. Scientology could grow and prosper. Unfortunately. They have built a reputation over the decades of being this scary, evil cult because of some of the actions that they take. What happened when, when we put up the video of um, uh, of my announcement that I plan to run? I, I hear that Pat Harney was calling around people saying, "You heard that he's going to run?" Yeah, we can't let him do that. Yeah, she was calling local downtown Clearwater business owners saying, so um, what do you think? What do you think of this Mark Bunker running? And why, why do, you, do you think that's okay? Do you think that's right? Do you think he should be able to? And, and why? Why are you okay with that? 
you know, like pressuring them. And then she was like, well, maybe we should run a Scientologist. Huh? Yeah. Which would be great. Yeah. M maybe you should. Yeah. Go, go for it. <laughs> I'd love a debate. Exactly. Exactly. Um, they'd have to lift the injunction against you, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> we're okay with that. I know, it, we're only, okay. it only involves uh, protesting in certain areas, and we're not going to be doing that. Right. Um, and here's the thing. Pat Harney, you know, I've encountered her a few times. I don't know why she thinks she has the, well, I know, do know why she has the, think she has the right to say, we can't let him run, because Scientology says they have to stop him. But um, I, I remember back in, in, in the LMT years, we'd hear from people that said, I wrote a letter to the editor of the then St. Pete Times, uh, where I, I said Al Ron Hubbard was a horrible sci-fi writer. Mm. And I believe it was she and Al Butner went to the guy's office to try to get that guy fired for a letter to the editor that wasn't even about Scientology, it was about Hubbard's science fiction writing. Wow. And who went out to try to cost these people their job? Scientology's PR people. This is what they consider good PR? No. That's why they have this reputation they have. Yeah. Of all the things they do to make Hubbard right, yep. to say that Scientology is the only answer, and uh, most important thing is to protect Scientology and keep Scientology working. Well, it's not working, and you can see the numbers have dwindled. Yeah, I mean Scientology used to, and they may still say that they have 10 million members, but they don't. There are more people uh, in the world who consider themselves Jedi nuts yeah. than Scientologists. Well, when it comes to numbers, um, you know, uh, Dr. Bob Cundiff, I'm making a, a short segue here. Dr. Bob Cundiff is one of the current Clearwater City Council people, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I was told a story yes. by the woman who was involved in this story that she was taking uh, one of Dr. Cundiff's classes mm -hmm. and she was giving a presentation and she was comparing um, L. Ron Hubbard to certain uh, political leaders, making an unfavorable comparison. And Dr. Cundiff took her out of the class, took her into the hallway and said, you are not to talk about Scientology in my class. We have a Scientologist in our student body. They represent 12% of the constituency in Clearwater, Florida. And I'm not going to stand for this. Well, I'm telling this story for two reasons. One, um, should a professor really be telling somebody they're not allowed to mention Scientology in a college class? No. Two, Dr. Cundiff has clearly um, swallowed the church's propaganda that 12% of Clearwater, which has about 115,000 citizens, that 12% of them are Scientologists, that literally over 12,000 Scientologists live in Clearwater. The fact that Dr. Cundiff believes that, the fact that the church tells people that, the fact that any of the politicians in this town may actually believe that <laughs> um, is comical. Um, uh, that goes along with your point of do they still claim 10 million members? Yeah, they do. And they still claim that 12,000 plus people, uh, active Scientologists, live in this town, not Tampa Bay, in this town. Um, they would be lucky if there are 4,000 Scientologists in all of Tampa Bay, in all of Tampa Bay. And that includes the 1,500 Sea Org members who work here at FLAG, right. three quarters of which are foreigners who cannot vote. So um, one of the things I hope comes out of this election, once you win, is that I'm hoping people will go, well, geez, if this guy can run for city council in Clearwater, right in, in their faces, and they couldn't do anything about it, and they couldn't keep you from getting elected, and they couldn't get any of their own members elected. Is there really that much to be afraid of? I say no. I agree. Yeah. It's not unusual. I mean, for decades, we had a mayor and city council who knew what Scientology was up to. Yeah. I mean, when Gabe Casares came to town, 
you know, there, a lot of stuff was revealed, and the people at Clearwater weren't happy about it. Um, but the, the entire uh, 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 city council had weeks, a week-long set of hearings about Scientology. That's right. People like Paulette Cooper came in to talk about what Scientology did to her, and former members talked about all the abuses that are still going on today. Nothing's changed, except the politicians now would like to just ignore it. Yeah, it's true. Even the people who are aware of it, they're, they're not going to speak out against it. Right. It's true. There, there is um, this sort of a mindset that if they acknowledge that there's a problem, that they're contributing to the narrative that this is a, this is Scientology's town, and I know a lot of the politicians locally, um, probably rightfully so, are very very resentful that people think this is a Scientology town. Yeah. But the thing is, you don't fix that by ignoring it or refusing to comment on it. You fix that by speaking publicly and and telling everybody about all the other great parts of Clearwater or Clearwater Beach and all this all this kind of stuff. Right. Running away from it doesn't fix it. Being afraid to say the words in public doesn't accomplish anything. Mm -hmm. right. So um, that's going to be that's going to be changing pretty soon. There's three yep. council seats open, two council seats and the and the mayor's seat. Right. And I'm very optimistic for what things are going to look like 8 months from now. Yeah, and you know we're not going to shut Scientology down and chase them out of town. We can't do that, no matter who's on the board. Right. But we can be open and honest about this and try to actually deal with them the way we should. With input from people like Aaron and, and Mike Rinder, for God's sake, who, who dealt with city leaders for many years here when he was in Scientology, it kind of has an inside understanding of what happens when you deal as a city with Scientology. It's foolish not to talk to him. Foolish. Right. So, uh, uh, hopefully I can consider Mike a part of my team. Uh, uh, you know, he's certainly an invaluable source for oh, absolutely. brain and information. Um, uh, but I, I think it's going to be a really fascinating one. Oh, by the way, uh, uh, Pat Harvey. Mm -hmm. We were talking about her PR lady. And I said I'd love to debate a Scientologist. The only time I ever had a chance to do that was on a, a really fun radio show out of Texas. Uh, I was invited on the first day to talk about Scientology. And, and uh, it was a freewheeling conversation. Uh, uh, I answered all the questions, including uh, about the mythology, Zenu and blowing us up in volcanoes and all that kind of stuff. Uh, because it's a, it's a story that people enjoy hearing. <laughs> they do. <laughs> And it's a story that you aren't told in Scientology. So, uh, 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 in, in the course of my appearance on the first day, Pat Harney called in and said, you know, you shouldn't have this guy on the radio. Uh, and I was not able to have much of a banter with her, but uh, the host invited her to be on the show the next day. One of the things that she said in, uh, in, the, in the first appearance on, on my show was, uh, he asked her about, uh, she was asked about Zinu, and she said, I've, I've been in Scientology for ages, and I've never read anything oh. like that. So the next day when she has her own, show, her own hour on, on the station, uh, I called in. So the host said, listen, she, she got a chance to call in and talk to you. You should have an opportunity to call in and talk to her. So I called in and asked Pat where she was on the bridge. And she admitted that she was clear. So of course she so hadn't I, read it. So I, yeah, <laughs> I was able to point out, well, that, that is what Scientologists call an acceptable truth. Uh, she hadn't read any of that stuff. She wasn't allowed to read any of that stuff. She didn't say there's absolutely nothing about Xenu and volcanoes and Scientology. She implied it by saying, I've never read anything like that. 
right? And that's the way Scientology behaves most of the time, whether talking to the media or to you in person. Yeah. Um, it might be a reason why they wouldn't want someone who's OT to be on those public lines. Hey, so that, you okay? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So that they could, quote unquote, honestly say something like, I've never read that. That's, I would know. <laughs> I mean, Mark, when I was 14 years old, here in Clearwater, studying full-time at, here at Flag, I was sitting right outside the one-stop shop when it was located here next to the Clearwater building. Mm-hmm. And um, it was a meal break, and somebody came up with a, a print off of an alien, and it said like Xenu on it, and he was handing it to me. I want uh, this is so you guys know what Scientology is really about. And of course, I look at this, and I'm thinking, the fuck's what are you talking about? And then I ran into the one stop shop, and I grabbed the Sea Org member and from OSA. I was like, this guy's passing these things out, and they're trained not to go, what? Oh my god because that would acknowledge the truth of it. Mm -hmm. This guy literally says like, "Mm. so so what, what's the problem, who cares, I don't, what's that? Just play completely ignorant. To another Scientologist. Mm -hmm. He was, they don't just do that to the public, they do that internally as well. Yeah. And that was my first introduction. And even then it didn't break through with me because it was just looked like such nonsense and garbage. Like I never would have dreamed that's what was on the OT levels, you know. Um, so anyway, that's just a story of them playing ignorant. Even to a staff member, they were playing ignorant. That's of course. That's the playbook. Yeah. Um, but I, I say, stop the lies. That's simple, isn't it? You know, they they will tell you when they meet you, whatever religion you are, that your religion is completely compatible with Scientology, which isn't true. I mean, your money is compatible with Scientology. Um, but, you know, when you hear the tape of L. Ron Hubbard saying, there was no Christ, <laughs> some madmen 2,000 years ago found uh, some of Hubbard's tech and misinterpreted it. Oh. And the man on the cross represents every man. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not sure that that is compatible with Christianity. I don't think so. But, you know, uh, again, you can believe anything you want, but it's just one of those things where they'll say anything to you uh, to seem mainstream and acceptable. You know, you can believe what you want. If you you want to believe that, that... Zenu blew up in a volcano, and you were covered with body things, and you need to get rid of those body things. You should just tell people about that the moment you meet them. Here's where you, here's where your real problem lies, because you're going to have to spend three hundred and sixty thousand dollars or more to reach the levels where you find out this information. So it's kind of a bait and switch religion. Yep. Um, it's the early parts are uh, all about you. Uh, helping you get rid of your this life trauma and become clear. And then as soon as you become clear, they say, okay, now you're really in trouble. <laughs> now you've got to get onto the OT levels fast. And you start to uncover that, oh, oh, so now I have to talk to these body things using the same e-meter that, that I've been using all along to find experiences in my life. Now I have to go back to past lives and I have to clear all, all these body things and explain to them it's okay, you were blown up in a volcano, you can go now. I mean, that's a condensed version of it, but, uh, you know, I, I don't see what what's so hard about just explaining it. Yeah. You know, you've got a past life incident that caused a lot of trauma on this planet and other planets in this sector of the galaxy. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'll tell you, uh, I'm sure many people watching may already know this, you know, internally the explanation is that if you are exposed to this information before you are ready for it, it will hurt your health. Mm-hmm. Um, I personally believe, after being out the other end now, that the real reason is if people knew about that in advance, they would leave earlier on. Right. They wouldn't pay... 50, 100, 200,000 dollars to do these levels 
hoping that every next level is going to be what they were really expecting. Right. They just, that's the reason. And it takes you, and that's why I say there's like this mind control factory. They have all these issues built into Scientology that kind of get you on this track where you accept only what Scientology tells you. Put the blinders on because you know if you have a negative thought about L. Ron Hubbard, yeah. it's going to show up on the meter and it's going to cause you trouble and probably cost you money. Right. Um, you know, it's all, all of these abuses are just to protect Scientology from losing a member. Yeah. That's it. Losing a member and losing their revenue and losing that member's money. Right. Yeah. So, it seems easy enough to, to solve it. Just stop lying, stop abusing people. Yep. And then Scientology would be respectable. Now, is there a chance of that happening? Uh, I, I would hope so, eventually. Yeah, but anything's possible. Anything's possible. They'll have to um, have a lot of pain brought to bear upon them before they'd be willing to make such changes. <laughs> that's, that's for <true>. sure. <laughs> and, th and that's the case with, with Scientologists as well. Yeah, I think people, now correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. but I think people usually leave when particular pressure on them is enough. I think it's a fair make, statement. To make them start to look at, at their experiences. I, I think each individual person ends up in some way being pushed somehow beyond their own personal breaking point. They're exposed to more abuse and hardship than they are willing to endure. And um, that's why I say Scientology makes its own enemies. Because once it pushes its members past that point, then they start looking, then they start asking, then they start going, oh, Jesus. Uh, I, I figured something was wrong, uh, you know. Yeah. And, um, but it's funny how this conversation can go both ways. On the one hand, we can say, well, if Scientology just treated people better and made some reforms, it would be great and they could be a respectable religion. And that's a true statement. And on the other side, somebody could argue, well, I'd rather they just keep treating people terribly so that everybody would leave. <laughs> and it just depends on where you stand on that. Like, what do you consider a good result? Do you consider a good result people being treated better, or do you consider a good result everybody leaving? They're, bo they're both fine results with, to me. <laughs> the, and the, the way it is now, they're pretending to the outside world that everyone's treated great. Yeah. Everyone's happy. And inside, um, uh, e even if you're sent to the hole like Mike Rinder was for years, living and sleeping in a uh, filthy uh, uh, double wide trailer with bars on the windows and all the top management that pissed off uh, Miss Cabbage would, would be forced to sleep on the, on the floor under a desk perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, even at that point, if the FBI raided the headquarters and opened the door to, to say, you're all free, come with us, they'd go, I want to be here, it's my religion. You know? uh, they would defend what's what's happening to it's them. true so it's that mindset that you get locked into that the most important thing is to keep Scientology working right well I think we need to keep Clearwater working and we need to get back on track um, so we'll talk about a lot a lot of those issues uh, yeah and we'll uh, and at the meeting uh, again we're, we're gonna try to branch out and, and talk about uh, other important issues in the town too. Yeah, uh, and and it's not limited to just people who happen to live in Clearwater. If you're in yeah. Palm Harbor, if you're in Safety Harbor, Dunedin, Largo, Bel Air, come on by. It's you want to volunteer? Uh, yeah, it'd be great. Uh, you can come and sign up. Give us your name and phone number, and we'll uh, we'll get in contact with you as soon as the campaign starts, which should be September 19th. Uh, it, it's it's going to be a wild ride. Yeah. So, I think we, we, we can wrap it up. Oh, I wanted to, to mention one, one other thing. Yeah. This goes back to the, the Cundiff story. Yeah. How the student was pulled outside and said, listen, you can't talk about Scientology here because there's a Scientology student. She was comparing Hubbard to a major political figure right now who's in the news quite a bit. And 
I gotta believe that there were far more supporters in that classroom of this political person. And she didn't say, uh, he didn't say, uh, you can't talk about politicians in here the way you did. You're right. You can't uh, smear a, a, a party. That's right. Uh, it was, you can't talk about Scientology. That's right. And that's a statement born out of fear, not respect. Yeah. Right. I, it, that's a great point. Yeah. He didn't say don't bash someone's politics. He said don't bash L. Ron Hubbard in Scientology. Not cool. All right, shall, shall we eat? Yes. Uh, 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 yes, indeed. <laughs> so we'll see you next time. Please come and join us on Thursday if you can. Um, but uh, and until then, we're always here on the set of Dining with the SPs. We change the set every, every week. Bye. See ya.